Hey everybody, Sonny Carter here, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about growth, how to grow in your marriage, how to accelerate the growth in your marriage and in your life. So if you're kind of struggling with not growing in your marriage, if you kind of feel like it's stagnant, um, you're feeling more like roommates rather than lovers, that love connection is not there, then this video is gonna absolutely be helpful for you. And if you find this information relevant to you and you like this kind of content, then hit the like button on this video, subscribe to my channel, click that alert button, and you'll get notified every time we put out new videos like this. Now, before we dive into the content, uh, just if you haven't heard of me before, my name again, my name is Sonny Carter. We've been helping marriages build an unbreakable love connection by helping them break through barriers, emotional and mental barriers from their past, um, so you guys can really have the marriage and the life that you were destined to live. Now, enough about me. Let's dive right into the topic. So, the first point, the first way you want to accelerate growth in your marriage. And again, like I said before, if your marriage is not growing, it's either dying, okay? There's either two ways. It's either up or down. Um, people who put their marriages on autopilot and they think they're in the middle, they're not, okay? Um, you may feel like you're in the middle, but you're slowly dying. Your marriage is slowly dying. So you have to keep that marriage growing. You have to do things and be proactive to keep that spark alive, to keep that love connection there. And all because you're putting in effort, to keep that spark alive doesn't mean that you're not in love with each other. Um, that's just a, a fallacy. That's a myth. Okay. Um, once you pass that infatuation stage, you've got to you got to put the work in to have growth in your marriage. And that's the beautiful thing about marriage. Okay. If you put the work in, you have the growth. You have a fulfilling, satisfying, passionate marriage. Okay. So point number one is you have to forgive and heal. Now this is huge because if you're in a state of bitterness or resentment, um, and you have some things that you're not letting go. It's going to be harder for you to move forward in growing your marriage. You have to deal with this first. Um, and I love the way Mel Nelson Mandela said it. He said, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. Okay, um, Unforgiveness is only going to hurt you. It's going to only hurt your relationships. It's going to only hurt your children. It's going to prevent you from being happy. Um, so you have to be willing to get healed and forgive. Do everything you can. Um, now, I know some people say, well, my spouse did something that's unforgivable. Maybe he cheated on me and, or he did something that's unbelievable or she did, did something that's unbelievable that I just can't forgive them, okay? Um, you're going to have to make a decision there, okay? You're going to have to make a decision because, again, even if you choose to not stay in a relationship, you still have to move forward and forgive because it's going to stay with you. It's going to harbor in your heart and it's going to cause you pain in your life even though you don't feel like it, it will. And so um, one of the things you can do here is to journal a lot, okay, and really um, journal the pain that you're feeling, um, journal the emotions that you're feeling, write down, put it on paper, like get raw, like just write down everything um, that, that, that you feel, the hurt, the pain, and just, just put it all on paper, release it. Um, and then after that, you know, have conversation with your spouse, like be open, um, get help and continue to communicate and don't give up like forgiveness and healing is a process it's not something that happens overnight where you know especially if you've been hurt really bad where you can say well i forgive you and that's it it's over it doesn't work that way sometimes if you've been hurt really bad it just takes rebuilding trust again okay it takes that time to re to rebuild trust to rebuild our foundation um to rebuild respect for each other and this is a process okay this is an ongoing process um, but you'll get there eventually if you don't give up. If you um, continue to stay the course, you're going to eventually get to that point where your love connection will um, continue to grow and continue to feel uh, affectionate for each other and love for each other. Okay, um, It doesn't have to take forever, but it is a process, especially if you've been hurt really bad. Okay, So that's the, the one thing you have to do is you have to forgive and heal. Okay, Not only for your relationship, but for you and for your life, for your happiness and your fulfillment okay? and for your joy from keeping you from getting stuck. Um, the second thing you want to do is uh, spend quality time together. Um, this is part of rebuilding trust, okay? The more time you spend together, um, just connecting with each other's inner world, not talking about kids, not talking about finances, not talking about, you know, um, um, church obligations or errands you have to, like any of that stuff, just talk about each other, like getting to know each other, getting to bond, talk about each other's dreams and desires and passions and what you guys the vision you have for your marriage and you know what you see what you see you know what do you guys want to do in five to ten years what do you want to do in the year like just talking and just bond and connect and get into each other's world emotionally um this is going to rebuild trust and this is going to be able to connect uh connect you guys at a deeper level 
and it's going to help with the forgiveness and healing process. Um, and if you have nothing to forgive and heal over, um, then it's going to, you know, still spend quality time together. Obviously, date nights is something that's um, pretty cool and you should do to keep the relationship fun and active. I think sometimes we get so busy in family life that we just lose the fun in our relationship. We just don't have fun anymore. Um, everything is so serious and it's about bills and the kids and making sure this is happening, making sure we're doing this, making sure we're going to this wedding and to attending this event. And we just don't stop for a second and just have fun and enjoy the present moment with each other. Um, because at the end of the day, when we die, all we're gonna have is the memories that we have with each other and with our kids. I mean, think about it. Is there anything else that we gonna really have when we die? We can't take nothing with us. We can't take our house with us. We can't take the money with us. We can't take the jobs. We can't take the careers. Um, but we can leave a legacy. We can leave a legacy with our children and we can create exceptional memories and experiences and, and just feel alive. But we can start that today, just, just making that decision, okay? So spend quality time together have fun and just lighten things up a bit um and if you need to get away from the kids invest in the babysitter to do that okay um and th so number one is forgive and heal number two is spend quality time together and number three is understand your emotional and mental makeup like what do i mean by that um understand how things you went through in the past or experiences you might have had in your childhood uh, maybe abuse or maybe traumatic experiences um, might have created some of the weaknesses that you have in your relationship and the behavior um, and some and, and the harmful cycles that happen in your relationship. Um, you know, when my wife and I got married, um, I probably like our third year within our marriage. We've been married for about 10 years now, but probably our third year into our marriage, we started to notice that we would have these arguments in cycles um, that the same... Um, the same triggers would come up from time to time. Um, sometimes, you know, the arguments would be big, sometimes they'll be subtle. But we noticed that the underlying cause of it was the same. It was either insecurity, it was either trust, it was either feelings of abandonment, it was uh, feelings of being left alone. Um, it was all these different, these different core messages that were running in the back of our minds that was causing us to behave in a certain way. And it wasn't until we look back in our past and really got in touch with some of the experiences that we've been through and how it created this insecurity, how it created this lack of trust, how it caused us to be guarded in our hearts, how it caused us to not be vulnerable, to be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, it's for some people, they're afraid to be intimate. Um, you know, they're afraid to, to give themselves sexually because of things that happened to them in the past. Um, there's all kinds of things, you know, we can, we can feel entitled, we can have a sense of entitlement um, and, and grandiosity because of the way we were raised and the things that happened to us in the past. Um, we can have emotional uh, deprivation and, and, and be afraid, just, again, not express ourselves emotionally, kind of be dull emotionally, not really engaging emotionally. And a lot of this can come from experiences in our childhood. And so we need to go back and look at exactly like our, our makeup, our emotional and mental makeup. Like why do we think the thoughts that we think? Why do we get triggered every time someone does something like that or my spouse does something like this? Um, you know, why do we have a hard time not trusting? Why do we have a hard time opening up our hearts to people? You know, why, why, when we get hurt, why do we respond this way? Why do we cope this way? You know, um, in, early, in the early years of our marriage, like I used to cope by, um, sh by going inward, by not talking, um, by staying quiet, right? Now, I wasn't, part of it, yes, part of it is temperament, but a lot of it had to do with my past because growing up, I didn't really have anyone to talk through my emotions with me. You know, my mom, she was a single mom. My dad was never around. And so every time I felt pain or hurt or, or, or was going through stuff in school, like my mom was busy working. It was just me and my brother. So I didn't have anyone to talk to and express myself. But that's, I had to make that connection, okay? And once I make that connection, and I, I felt myself tempted to get to go uh, inward and not talk and not express myself because I was angry or upset, I would know that, okay, this is, I know where this is coming from. I'm not gonna give into it. I'm gonna talk to my wife, express my hurt, talk about my feelings. I'm gonna open up. I'm not gonna avoid her, shut her off, and, and go into a cave because that's what I used to do and I used to damage our marriage. Um, but it wasn't until I got connected to my past and understand how it caused my behavior is when I was able to turn things around, okay? 
Um, so that's so important. And we're going to be coming out with more videos to get to actually talk about specific uh, barriers mentally and emotionally that 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 you might have had from your past. Um, like, you know, what causes entitlement, what causes grandiosity, what causes mistrust, what causes emotional deprivation. Like, we're going to be talking about these things. Um, and again, if you want to learn more about that kind of stuff, um, then click the subscribe button and, and um, you hit that alert button. You'll be notified when we come out with videos like that. But these kind of things is what transforms lives. This is what reinvents your life. This is what really, uh, what Breakthroughs is about, is really getting an awareness of your makeup emotionally and mentally how it was created so you can be more conscious of it and then you can be able to weaken it you can be able to replace it and just continue to grow to a new version of you you know there's a saying that um your marriage should not look your marriage should always be a different version you know if you look if you have an iphone or android you know that they come up with different versions of softwares and upgrades uh, every so often. My wife kind of hates upgrades because she feels like upgrades is really downgrades because when Apple upgrades, they just, you know, things just stop working. But uh, that's kind of, I digress. But but in this scenario, we're going to assume that every upgrade on the iPhone is a good upgrade, okay? Or the Android, okay? Um, but every version is supposed to be an upgrade, right? It's supposed to be faster features, better features. Um, it's supposed to work more. It's supposed to give you a better experience. So, your marriage is the same way. Every year should be an upgraded version, okay? If your marriage looks the same now than it does a year ago, there was no growth, okay? If your marriage looks the same now than it does five years ago, then there was no growth. And so what you want to do is say, you want to replace your marriage with growth every year. Every month, when you want to make that commitment to yourself that every single year, my marriage is going to look different than the prior year, okay? I'm going to do actions today. Oh, I have a little key that just came in. Video bomb, that's okay, I'm gonna keep going. Every year, you wanna be able to um, replace your marriage with a better marriage, okay? Every five years, you want your marriage to be different. Um, you wanna do things, think about that. You wanna, every week, you wanna think about, okay, how can I improve my marriage so that the next year or the next week is different or the next month is different, okay? So you want a version 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, in your relationship. Same thing with your life. You never want yourself, your personal growth to be the same. Um, you want to basically have um, a different version of yourself every single year. You want to continue to grow every single year. And this is um, this is how you grow your marriage. This is how it works out. And so those are the three tips, guys, to accelerate growth in your marriage. Um, is one, forgive and heal. Two, spend quality time together. Three, understand your gen your emotional and mental makeup. Uh, what happened in your past that caused you to behave in negative cycles and to do the things that um, that caused you to uh, have harm in your marriage, and then uh, and you would have acceleration growth and become uh, version 2.0, version 3.0 of your marriage. Not just your personal life, but your marriage. Make that commitment to not make it look the same every single year. To upgrade a version of your marriage every single year. Um, all right, so again, if you got uh, value from this, shoot me a comment below. Let me know what you think. I'm always reading my comments, and I'd love to hear just your feedback, what you thought about this comment, and um, I appreciate you guys so much. And again, if you want more help with um, just accelerating the growth of your marriage, uh, breaking the mental and emotional barriers of your past so you can uh, have the marriage and the life that you were destined to have, that you were created to have, that uh, our creator has um, destined to, for you to live the life that you deserve, then uh, subscribe to this channel and hit the alert button and we'd love to put out more content like this to help you guys out all right so appreciate you guys so much and i'll see you in the next video take care for now bye